everyone, and welcome to the Aborts Watch podcast. I am your host this week, Eric Anderson, editor in chief of Awards Watch. It is podcast 228, but it's a special one because it is the 2024 summer box office draft. Uh, we did this last summer, which was, of course, the summer of Barbie and Oppenheimer, and we kind of know how that went with. With Barbie kind of overwhelming uh, the entire season. And of course, my team foolishly coining Floppenheimer when it still made $950 million. I mean, it wasn't enough to win, but it did very, very well. And we had uh, Napalm on our face. Not a good look. Not a good look at all. Uh, so we are back for the 2024 draft and let's kind of just cut right to the teams uh ryan is not here today with us so representing ryan and his team is sophia sophia introduce your team yeah i'm so excited to introduce my team and i'm ready for another box office draft i think last summer we were really secure Josh, I remember you were on my team last year about Oppenheimer. Mm -hmm. We we knew. But we also took Indiana Jones, which I think was our great curse and downfall. So congratulations to your team. We will see how it goes today. But on my team, I have Josh Parham. Hello, hello. And I'm excited to introduce Karen Peterson. Welcome. Hello. hello. Yeah. I, I'm I'm excited to have karen here this is her first podcast experience so we want to make it as creepy and uncomfortable as possible <laughs> and i think with with this group especially especially jay uh very problematic jay uh it now should we're talking be that yes and speaking of uh <laughs> let me introduce my team which yes, like we said last year, and you know, different different groupings of teams at that are chosen randomly according to Ryan. I don't know how he does it, but he says it's random. We'll see. I don't know. <laughs> My team this year, uh, Jay. Hello, Jay. How are you, Jay Ledbetter? Hello, hello. Uh, I'm doing great. This is uh, this is going to be a lot of fun. I made a whole ass spreadsheet sheet for this thing i brought my uh i brought my work life to the uh to the box office game so we have our proprietary I'm, predictive model uh that i'm going telling to you it is day. it is foolproof it is fail safe and it only takes when, 10 minutes to load in the web browser it's great I, there are so many pictures and colors i was like <laughs> it it tapped into some very uh emotional things for me all right we also have dan bear Hello, hello. Back for another one with Eric. Here we when go. Let's let's see if it proves. <laughs> I know. What's up with that? I think I think I think Ryan's just trying to like keep the some of the gays together. Yeah. But uh I wish why don't we have Josh? We should have an all gay team. I'm we just should saying. have. We, we really should. Really no, should. Hey, I am yes. very happy to be here with Sorry. Josh. Yes, yeah. I'm sure More you are. Uh <laughs> and bringing up the rear in in a in a non-gay way is Kevin Lee. Hey, <laughs> Karen! I told you it was going to be a mess. I, I told That's you. That's right what I'm here for. That. Yeah, we're <laughs> we it's, love it's, mess. <laughs> we love mess. Um, I'm going to run down a really quick, hopefully, uh, description of the game of the rules and how we are uh, making our decisions and how we will find a winner uh, by the end. So Ryan's team because they lost last year, we'll have the chance to either take the number one pick of the draft uh, or be able to issue the first bomb pick. And the bomb pick is the choice that we're going to make for the other team that we think is going to do really poorly. Uh, and yeah. And so what we're trying to do is look at the, the films this summer, which we think will do really well at the box office, uh, but also combined with a really good critical reception, both based on Rotten Tomatoes and Metacritic. Uh, each film has a, uh, a multiplier, uh, a two times multiplier in 
they're factored into their budget. So if a budget has 100 million, the draft will reflect it as 200 million. You can ask Ryan for all of this to make more sense. I'm just reading a script. Once the film passes the new multiplier budget, the team earns points from there. And that's that. Uh, for the critical, for the Rotten Tomato and uh, Metacritic element, uh, the base is a 70, 70%. So you have to hit that before you start earning points for your film. If your film does not hit that, uh, you lose points based on, on those numbers. So if you have you know, a movie that ends up with a 40% on Rotten Tomatoes, that's like 30 million points or whatever dollars, however it is actually translated to. Uh, so I, I, I think we, we might want to just briefly talk about what we think about what this summer looks like compared to previous. Obviously, last summer's is a pretty wild exception within this last five-ish years. But do we think that this is going to be a kind of quiet summer or a big one? I feel like it's when we started hashing out these numbers and what we think that things are like going to make in their even their international runs. It didn't look really pretty. There weren't a whole lot of things that we could really jump out. And, and I think we're also kind of hoping, too, that we don't have a situation where where one thing is such a runaway that it, it doesn't really make for much of a competition. So I kind of want to hear what, what you guys have to say about that. And, and uh, uh, Karen, I want to hear from you first. Um, well, thank you. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I really, honestly, I do not know what to expect from this summer. I don't think we're looking at a Barnbenheimer at all. There's nothing that has that kind of buzz, but at the same time, uh, just from my folks that, uh, my friends that are not in any way involved in the film industry, there's a lot that they're looking forward to. So it, it's basically, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think that's exactly the right answer. Um, Kevin, what do you, what do you think about this summer overall before we get into anything too specific? Yeah, I I agree with uh, most of what you said, Eric. I feel like, uh, yeah, there's probably going to be a couple that are going to be big, successful hits. But my overall impression, actually, from the overall lineup from the summer is I wonder just how many of them are going to have true international appeal. Because most of them seem like they're very focused domestically. And so that, that's going to be the big question. I feel like... Uh, in terms of our box office draft for uh, for this year, I think that's going to be a huge factor into deciding which team wins. Yeah, uh, uh, Josh, what do, what do you think? Um, I have complete pessimism. <laughs> I think this is going to be a very <laughs> rough summer, especially compared to last year. I think these movies, they all have potential. They do. But like, even I look at our list and I'm like, Okay, we'll we'll see about this. I really don't know. I feel like there are going to be maybe one or two that will obviously be like guaranteed hits and maybe one surprise that we're not expecting. But to be honest with you, I I don't know if there is like the fever pitch enthusiasm for some of these movies. And it might just be like this makes money because people wanted air conditioning for two hours. So I don't I don't know. We'll see. But I'm not very optimistic about the box office chances for a lot of these movies but if this one might be one on the margins i think this is what this year is going to be like yeah i i i feel like that's kind of where where most of us are going jay what do you think stinko rama look uh 2023 <laughs> many people declared that to be the year of the bomb with uh oppenheimer coming out obviously i think 2024 is really the year of the bomb i see just so many on here i mean this is just Oppenheimer did not create nuclear bombs for them to be used this substantially like that. that it needed to be more of a threat than 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 the real presence. I think it's going to take hold with this summer. Um, and also just as far as movies I'm looking forward to, there's not like anything super crazy. Uh, I mean, there are definitely some that I'm really looking forward to, but the, the, by the numbers, there's not a, there's not a ton. But I I don't see many of these hitting 
I don't see a Barbenheimer weekend in here by uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Yeah, Dan, what do you what do you think about this summer? I I feel a little differently from everyone else. Apparently, um, I actually think that this is a really interesting summer for Hollywood. There is not even the the things in here that are IP are not like billion dollar franchises you know it's the planet of the apes franchise which was like a all those made like four to five hundred mil word worldwide and um bad boys which did well and then the only real like superhero thing we have is deadpool and wolverine um which we it'll be interesting to see how that does um <clears throat> but i like that it's a lot of more original ish things i feel like this is a we have potential to see the return of the mid-budget blockbuster for lack of a better term and i think that's actually really exciting in general if not particularly for this game <laughs> because a lot of those mid-budget things are those are huge risks when you have things that are potentially making hundreds plural of millions of dollars yeah, for sure. Uh, and Sophia, what do you what do you think about this summer? Yeah, I mean, as far as my personal taste goes, and just looking at the list, I can't say I'm thrilled by many of these. There are a few I'm really excited for, which I'm not going to reveal yet, just in case my team wants to take any of them. But I think I agree with what Dan said in terms of the game. I think that as far as this goes, you know, the past two years that we've been doing this, there have been some clear front runners or films that you want to take or films that you know will clearly be bombs. And this, I don't know, there's a little bit more variety to it, I think. And it's very up in the air with how it could go. Yeah. I, I wonder if, if we might see a little more uh, high reward from some high risk choices as a, mm -hmm. as a result of that. And, you know, even trying to like hash out budgets and potential budgets there are definitely some big budgets this summer, but when I think about last year's, which had, you know, movies with $300 million budgets, we don't, we're, we don't have that this year. And clearly one of the, one of the elements that has impacted uh, almost any, anything uh, were the two strikes that we had last year. And, some studios got nervous and they pushed things even further out than than maybe 2024. And I and I think that's there's a little bit of that. Uh, I wonder if uh, if Dune two came out more in the summer than spring, if if that would be uh, uh, a different result for for it. Um, I don't know. It's um, yeah, there is an an interesting balance of sequels, prequels, and some originals, and and I I'm hopeful, maybe like like Dan is that that some of these mid budgets will take hold, and that kind of will give more green lights to them. But on the other side of that, I it's any anything that that doesn't is just going to be another reason for. Uh, you know, the the David Zaslavs to absolutely abandon anything that would be remotely uh, not IP. So I shout out Zaslav, yeah. though. Huge payday. Well deserved. <laughs> Congrats to him. Jeez. Yeah, he's Pro truly uh, proof that if your company loses lots of stock prices, you too can fail upward as a straight white male. Yeah, I'm. I'm telling you, I, I, I am in the wrong business. I, I definitely, uh, I definitely should have been a daddy. massive failure. Yes, Zaz Daddy. God, Jay. I told you, Karen. Absolutely the oh. worst. Jay Ledbetter. <laughs> we love him. All right. Uh, let's kind of get right into it. And Sophia, as the yes. uh, de facto leader of the the tribe uh, today. <laughs> Point of um, clarity. I would like to yes. say Sophia has actually been our real leader in all of this. Not right. Oh, <laughs> wow. I've, I've usurped the throne. 
like any good oh. survivor player <laughs> i was great. just gonna i was just gonna <laughs> say uh ryan is off on a a, a solo adventure right now uh away he from was the sent tribe. away on the journey <laughs> sent away on the on the journey and sophia has uh created a brand new alliance so i this yeah that makes a lot this of sense. is my alliance we are going to strike first. We want to take the first overall pick. Sure. I think that, you know, the bomb pick, of course, can be fun, but I think we want to pounce first. And I will go ahead and select our number one overall pick. So Kevin made a really good point about things that can really appeal internationally. We're also thinking about budgets. We don't have a budget for this one, but based on the previous films, in this universe, we will say um, we can expect the budget to be a little bit less than some of the other big ones. We're banking on illumination and those little yellow creatures. We will be going with Despicable Me for banana. <laughs> Learning from our previous uh, big win, yes, <laughs> the, exactly. Despicable Me three. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, illumination I think this is was just, just so bankable. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean. You just take a look at Migration last year, a movie that had no press. Like, nobody knows about that movie. And it made, like, almost $300 million at the box and, office. And, and that's I without anybody knowing what that movie it. is. <laughs> yeah, Illumination's yeah, a juggernaut. I mean, it really is. It's. I think it really is forward thinking as far as American audiences are concerned to have everybody complains about you know those little line the the subtitles at the bottom of movies that they're so afraid to talk about what but with minion ish they're willing to completely not understand what they're saying so this is sort of like a whole new frontier of um cultural integration into american filmmaking and that's what i love so much about the despicable me franchise and that i think is why it has made so much money over the course of uh, the franchise's history Truly, make it, made up languages are the future of filmmaking between Dish and Simlish in the upcoming Sims film from Margot Robbie. Oh Sophia, who's your favorite minion? Um, I've actually never seen a minion film. Ooh. Well, bad form, bad form. <laughs> so this, wow. is, this is a real case of um, just going with... This is with, a real Zaslav approach to yeah. business is what you're doing. <laughs> Sophia, the answer for best minion is Kevin, of yes. course. There's Kevin a minion is a Kevin? good one. Yes, there's I'm a minion. So there's, much Kevin. <laughs> there's Kevin, there's Bob. Bob. Uh, I think that's all I got. Kevin and Bob. Wait, I did see one, I did see one of them, and I think I, I blocked out the experience. <laughs> because it was just all children in an AMC. Yeah. That happened. But you were in hell. Yeah. Our yes. discussion preparing for this was really funny because we were like, we hate this movie, but it's gonna make so much money. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> It's it's incredible, honestly, because like I think at this point, like when you think about Universal Studios and like imagery that we now associate with Universal, I feel like it's minions riding on dinosaurs is what Universal Studios is now. Mm. Please do not give them any more ideas. <laughs> <laughs> I think we just ride. pitched technically they all. Five. <laughs> Technically, they already did the minions and dinosaurs in the minions movie, so we're we're all past that. We're all good. There you go. Especially since the new Jurassic Park is actually shaping up to be a movie that I want to see because oh, no. it has. Uh, well, sure? I mean, if you're gonna mm. if you're gonna have Jonathan Bailey as your as your male lead and Coleman Domingo, you know, I'm pretty Dev much Patel. going to be there. Yeah. Oh. Well, it's it's a lot of these are like, you know, just in talks and I think they're competing yeah. for the same role. So I th thought that Coleman Domingo and Dev Patel were competing for the same role, mm. but why can't we have both? Is uh, what yes, I'm saying. Exactly. That's my mind. I don't want to choose. <laughs> but the and whole then... Jurassic World franchise is now, you know, giving us the worst of all available options. So, we'll see. I will see, say it it gets worse than the Despicable Me movies. They're they're mostly pretty decent. It the third one was surprisingly movie. good. That one is interesting because the whole conceit of that film is that the enemy, the the grand villain of that movie is nostalgia. Mm -hmm. uh, um, and I thought that was very interesting. The anti-Fablemans. 
the anti Fablemans, both yeah. masterpieces. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I didn't realize this was going to be a, a Minions apologist <laughs> podcast. You know what? And both won the exact same number of Oscars. It's true. Oh my god, <laughs> that is hilarious. <laughs> it is true. Parallels, cinematic parallels. <laughs> Little Sammy is standing there with his hands on his <laughs> hips right now. Absolutely <laughs> perplexed. Eric, uh, okay. Do? All right. So, I mean, obviously, uh, you know, in our conversations, this was, this was a clear, uh, if they don't pick this, they're crazy. You'd have to be crazy not to pick this. Uh, so obviously you did and, and good on you for it. Um, Jay will reveal our first pick as a result of your first pick. Sure, yeah. I mean, I, I've definitely typed multiple times this week. Uh, I don't really think it matters. Whoever gets Despicable Me 4 is going to win. Uh, so <laughs> It's true, he has. <laughs> now, we, uh, now we move on to the second pick, I suppose. So uh, from now on, I guess the next nine picks will be formalities. I will begin the formalities with the selection of the only Marvel film this year. Obviously, the one thing you have going against you with a Marvel movie is the massive budget. I've seen about $250 million. Uh, It's going to yeah. be the biggest budget of the summer. Uh, but it's going to make a crap load of money. Um, and I think there is... I do think there is a little bit of the absence makes the heart grow fonder with Marvel a smidge. I think there will be a little more hunger for a movie like this than there would have been if this had come out in... Um, you know, late last year or earlier this year. But, but I, I think there will be between Hugh Jackman coming back. I think Deadpool is almost operates as its own entity anyway. Um, and then just kind of the reintroduction of big Marvel movie making. I think this is going to be a massive hit and, you know, it'll get decent enough reviews. Everything gets decent reviews on Rotten Tomatoes now. That's how it works now. You know, I don't know. It'll be good. Yeah, I mean this 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 was this was pretty clearly uh the mm -hmm. the second the second pick and I think obviously if we had picked Despicable Me you guys would have would have gone with this. Yeah. Uh it just it just makes sense. There is a there is a lot of attention and advertisement and hype for it, so I do think that it will do well, but at the same time that also puts it on a pedestal where if it's even cl close to being uh, not successful. It'll be a a big flop. It just has more writing on it, I think, than than a lot of other things. And uh, you know, one of the great benefits of Despicable Me is the Fourth of July opening weekend. There's mm -hmm. there's a handful of other kid and family and animated films, but it's got a really open berth uh, that weekend to be able to just kind of dominate the the summer. Uh, and for Deadpool, I think, you know, opening at the end of July is, is still good. I think it has, I think it's a good date. It has a few things before it and after it. And, you know, obviously it's going up against DD the same day, which will probably demolish it, you know. Juggernaut. Absolutely. <laughs> Something we're probably all I sleeping on. Box office, soup, box office sensation Joan Chan is lying in wait. I'm telling you. It, if in 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 a just world, it would actually be happening. Sure. Uh, yeah. Is that so, a movie about the sister from Dexter's Laboratory? Jay, oh I'm just gonna I'm just BD, gonna mute get you. out of my laboratory. <laughs> oh <laughs> my god! <laughs> All right. So yes, that is that is our that is our number one pick. And Sophia, what do we have okay. for number two for you? Oh, and All we're right. do we have. Five overall. Each of us have five mm. teams have five picks. Yeah. So our second pick, I'm going to hand it over to Karen. All right. Um, yeah. So speaking of animated family friendly movies, our second pick is Inside Out 2. I mean, I don't know what more to say about that. I think the first one did amazing, and there's a lot of hype for this one. I, a lot of people I know are really looking forward to this and really uh, excited to get back into that world. So, yeah, I think you know with Pixar too, it's it's tricky. This is one that was sort of on my radar. Is like, is this a risky pick? Is this a safe pick? I think it's kind of somewhere in the middle. 
I feel like with Elemental last year when that came out, it hit with a thud. Like no one was going to see it at first, but then that movie ended up having legs and grossing more, I think, than people anticipated. I think double its budget. So I think with a property like Inside Out and with, I think, a lot of millennials and Gen Xers who liked Inside Out and our parents, they might be wanting to revisit that world as well. There might be that nostalgia factor bringing that up again. So I feel pretty good about this one, I think. It's a really interesting one. We obviously, we talked a lot about this one on our team because Pixar, you know, it's a, at least like a $200 million budget and yeah. they, we, everyone now has been conditioned that these things are going to be on Disney plus within a couple months. So mm -hmm. it's, it's tricky, but you're right. That elemental had like a strange word of mouth thing that we like rarely see anymore happen. Mm -hmm. It, it was interesting because I feel like the the initial reviews for that were kind of like, they were kind of low for Pixar. And then as people saw it, they're like, uh, no, this is actually really good. So it'll be interesting to see what the initial reviews are for Inside Out 2 and how that translates, I think. Yeah. And I feel like with Elemental, premiering at Cannes really didn't do it any favors. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. also this being bad didn't do it many favors. Well, that yeah. too. I well, that's a lie because it's actually really good. So <laughs> it is really good. But this 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 was really interesting because they have premiered at Cannes for quite a few years in a row now. Yeah. And I think they got really burned last year by early mid reviews for Elemental. And you know, I think for the most part, if you are if you're a Pixar fan and, and or you're a family that's going to watch a Pixar film reviews are not going to matter. That's it's not a big a big factor. You're just going to go where you're not. It's really more the conditioning of original stories like something like Elemental or Turning Red or Luca uh, versus sequels and prequels. And outside of the really big kind of disaster that Lightyear was. Uh, Inside Out is 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 mining very familiar and comfortable territory like Incredibles and Toy Story and Monsters Inc. and uh, Finding Nemo, all of which had sequels that had massive, massive success. So, I mean, I think it's a good pick. Uh, I saw the first 30 minutes of it, the first third of the movie uh, last month, and I was really really impressed um oh. it's cool and dark uh not that the first one didn't have a lot of darkness because it really really did but i was i was surprised i'm i'm hopeful to see where it goes i think okay. it will do very well review wise but amongst a certain faction that is a truly beloved film the original yeah, yeah. it's true yeah. i think a lot of people oh. are very excited for it and I think and it's coming are, out at a and point they are in the summer because look at the cast like they just they didn't pay people. So true. And I think it's coming out at a point in the summer too, where parents are going to be just desperate to take their kids to do something, anything out of the house. So I think mm -hmm. that's going to help it too. Although it is interesting, Eric, that you say that the beginning of this is really dark. And I, the thing that has been on my mind about this one is that it's about adolescence. So how many parents are going to take their under age 12 kids to see a movie that's dealing with these sort of things it'll be interesting to see oh, well wow. the, the darkness is not coming from the riley story it's coming from the emotions i i, I don't want to say much more than that but it there was there was i was really this is turning into spawn con surprised and impressed <laughs> like any the good riley podcast. the riley stuff is great because i mean in my estimation She's a burgeoning lesbian and she has this crush on this other girl. And that might be like a bridge too far for some parents that are China. that no. there's I don't think it's going to go anywhere that far. But smells uh, like discourse. That was, it was <laughs> the light year discourse was very unfortunate. Oh, that oh, was talk very about a real bad too. pick for our team that year. That was that was that Ooh. was painful, painful. Ooh. That, that was that was it was bad. I, yeah, 
Yes, Eric has taken full responsibility for that. Complete and 100%. That was that was like I championed that way too hard Mm. and used way too much pressure. So I just can't believe the fake story, the fake true story of the made up, not real toy in the world of Toy Story. But it's actually a cartoon. It was so clear. I can't believe it didn't work. (laughs) But I it did have a cat. the idea, but it was like this is absolutely not a movie that Andy was watching and getting obsessed yeah, with. Yeah. No. <laughs> Very that. Very that. Um, all right. Uh we will go to uh my team's you. next peak. And it's me. Um we definitely, again, like like with 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 your pick, thought of uh inside out as a uh a, a top contender and and one that we were had in 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 a high spot if you if you hadn't picked it uh but we have opted for a quiet place day one as our next pick i think and there's there's definitely as we get further down our list you know a lot of discussion and and disagreement about what should be and what and how all of this might shake out. Um, I think the budget for A Quiet Place works in its favor. It's about fifty million dollars. Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh my all God. these all these movies have been like made for cheap compared to blockbusters, and they have done very well. And this, you know, this is this is before we have final numbers. We're we're doing mm-hmm. everything from. Uh, you know, whatever research we can find and estimation, you know, based on previous yeah. and inflation. Bob's and... budgetblog.com. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. The gold <laughs> standard, gold standard there. Um, so I think this is, I think it's a good pick, but I think it's a risky pick because it is, for all intents and purposes, a prequel ish. So it has a new cast, it has a different cast. There is not uh, the, the, the Emily Blunt and bizarre return of John Krasinski uh, to sort of give audiences that familiarity. So its success is pretty dependent on, on a name brand. Um, and reviews. And, and reviews. Yeah. But I, the, I, the pig I, hive I, is going to show out. Well, yes, yes. I um, did get excited when I saw that he was directing this. I, I, yeah, I, I think it's, mm-hmm. yes, I think it's a good, I think it's a good release date. Uh, it is also end of, uh, end of June. It will be competing directly against some other high profile films. Maybe not exactly the same audience, but, you know, we know that that doesn't really matter if people want to go and see something. It's not. It's not the opening weekend against something else that's going to to be the a, a main factor. So yeah, we we're hopeful, but I think it's a I think it's a a potentially good pick. Great pick. Consistent. Our proprietary model loves it. Uh, I think this is really going to put us over the top. <laughs> but and, yeah, like and, John Krasinski and, says, "What is the weakness?" Yeah, do you remember that? In a quiet place, when that he wrote white that on board, the whiteboard, yes. yeah, that's called subtle <laughs> well, filmmaking, Sophia. Ev- ev- every My everything, favorite. everything needed to, yeah. Well, noises? <laughs> question mark? <laughs> noises? <laughs> oh my god! That was uh, the, the way, quiet, that quiet place for... too. I yelled at a child in that theater, so oh, uh, I love this story <laughs> very much. Yeah. I, Man, I that out. trailer, though, also, I think I have seen it in front of every single movie that I have been yeah. to. Me too. Yeah. One thing I will say about the Quiet Place movies is that you become very aware of how many people in your audience have popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> you sure do. <laughs> it is. It is so true. It is the the true barometer of theater etiquette. A Quiet Place. <laughs> it it is. Uh... It, I, there's, I think there's, there's an interesting factor with this one too, because yes, obviously noises are the, 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 the thing that that ticks off these creatures. But w- one thing that's that's clearly not a part of this is the deaf daughter and how that was a part of the entire narrative mm-hmm. itself mm-hmm. in creating tension in that 
that silence that is that was a a, a forced silence. I think that's that was kind of you know one of the things that was so great about the first film. Anyway, uh, so unique. This looks yeah. more like a classic monster movie. It does. Mm-hmm. It, it it feels a little more like that. And yeah, I mean, we're 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 banking on on that as as being a a, a big appeal. And. Honestly, I mean, this is one that we also ranked pretty high when we were talking about films. Mm-hmm. I think this, I think the 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 IP that is is uh, coming into this, I, a lot of people really like these movies and they're gonna go see them. I think it's gonna do really, really well overall. And with that that budget, it's that that it's really tasty. Helps, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. My bad source said a hundred million. So. I, I hope okay. I, I hope my source is right for the sake <laughs> of our we'll, team. <laughs> we'll check with uh, we'll check with Bob. Check with Bob. And see what he's like with the BBB. Yeah. We, yes. We'll. Yeah. This. Yeah. You know. There's. There's. There's no. There's. There's. Mm-hmm. There, there's no uh, Krasinski or uh, Emily Blunt. So we're yeah. we're kind of we're kind of also hoping 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 that is a. Uh, hey, it may not have Blunt or Krasinski, but it has Oscar winner Lupita Nyong'o. So yes, and. Mm-hmm. In in so many ways is going to feel like a return for her because we mm-hmm. have not seen her that much and yeah. need to see her more and so yeah we hope yeah, they, it have, makes they have they have they have quite a place to it fifty five I would be shocked if they doubled the budget of a movie where they stripped the stars out of but maybe mm-hmm. I don't I don't know. Hmm. We'll see. We'll see. Maybe because we'll more monsters, we'll but who knows? In, in 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 the end, we'll see how, how that how it New shakes York out. City production. Yeah, design. I mean, there's a lot of destruction of New York. That's, it does look that's like a grander scale. You know? Yeah. Well, we will see. So we our will see. Third pick. I'm going to hand it over to Josh. Yeah. So our next pick, we're gonna go with the Fall Guy. Okay, this, you know, this is a risk. This was one that is opening yeah. early. It's like at, right at the beginning of the summer. So it's got a lot of time to make some money. It looks like the kind of blandly appealing stuff that David Leach normally makes. But you know what? <laughs> it it works. It does tend to make some money. And, you know, I kind of feel like at this point, that's all you're just trying to do is like break even with some of these titles. And, and that's what we're looking at with this one. And I think that, you know, the budget, we have it at 125 so, you know, mm-hmm. high-ish, but not not too terrible. And I think especially for the star power that coming right off of, speaking of Barbenheimer, I think people are really excited about Gosling and Blunt headlining this. And it looks like it'll be the kind of, as I said, sort of broadly appealing fun that because it's also coming out so early has so much room to make its money and to acquire some points in this race. Yeah. It's, and I think um, with it, I, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's hard with this one because I don't have a lot of confidence in it making a ton of money, but it has that good slot that usually goes to a Marvel movie at the beginning of the summer. So I'm curious to see what happens with it there. And just, it's going to be an IMAX. When I was in London this week, I saw it all across the BFI, Ryan Gosling's face just right there on that IMAX as a big ad and it looked great. He looked very good. So hoping it will sell. That Beavis and Butthead sketch is worth at least like 75 million. (laughs) (laughs) It's fascinating to me that the most uh, stylistically outre of David Leach's films, which is Atomic Blonde, is his least grossing movie when it's also easily his best. But this movie, I saw it at South by Southwest with Ryan, and it is a true crowd pleaser. It it really is. It's a lot of fun. It's very entertaining, and Ryan Gosling and Emily Blunt are total movie stars in it. It's It's great. But it is one of those that we were worried on our team about it feeling very america centric how well is this going to play internationally versus because it's not franchise it's not um you know big international appeal super things we're uh, our proprietary model actually has this uh outside of the top 10 
in our uh, in our scores. Mm-hmm. Although we do have it as a slight positive, but uh, you know we'll, we'll we'll have to get back with our consultants and check exactly if the calculations really track on that one. Uh, yeah, that we'll might... we'll see what Bob has to say, and yeah, then we will yeah. we will get back to you on that. I'll tell you what. No, I either think... way, I'm looking forward to that movie. That movie looks fun as hell. I'm excited yes. to see your formulas more than to see the fall guy, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> yeah, I, I showed Sophia the spreadsheet, but she, she's not seen the formulas. Mm-mm. I was going to say a blank if... spreadsheet with just all of the colorful stills around it. OK, good. I was just about to have a panic attack right there, Jay. Oh, my God. No, 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 no. All that she saw was everything listed this. by release date. Then I would really with be no on Survivor numbers. if I could pull yeah, that you, off. Yeah, you would. <laughs> That would that would that would be like getting Eric's immunity necklace, which I probably could do. You probably really could, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we actually were just talking about this right before we came yeah. on because yeah, today. there it does have a the early date. It's the it's it is the out of the gate release. Uh, the IMAX thing is very compelling. Because we saw and continue to see the power of IMAX right Desert now power. in in a way that you, like everything is A24 is putting like old old movies back <laughs> into the theater. Um, not old. <laughs> when you said old. that, I thought of like Vicky Creeps old. <laughs> yeah, I just I just had like a uh, moment. Old uh, in IMAX? That there. would be awesome. Uh, yeah. Okay. Actually, that would be nauseating. Great. Um, yeah, I'd, give me yes. such a, be, I'd, I'd have such a headache. I'd love every second. Of it. Oh my God. Yes, but you know that's I, IMAX has become kind of what 3D was a decade or so ago, where it's 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 going to kind of start to saturate. But there aren't really enough, you know, IMAX theaters really for everything to do that. So it's I think it's that is kind of compelling uh, that that May third date. But at the same time, it's it's also kicking off the summer and and we'll all be really looking at that film as the barometer for what the summer is going to going to be like. I mean, I want to see it. I, I mm-hmm. wait, I see it in like a week. I, but, I would say just like outside of this box office draft, like I want that movie to do really well. Yeah, um, same. Because not not only is the movie a ton of fun and it's like, it's hilarious and romantic and very, very creative. But like, I, I love how sincere the approach is with that movie. It tells a very s- simple, familiar story, but it tells it with a lot of like personality and heart. And I think like we, I just want more movies like that, you know, and it, there's so much writing against it because it's it's not based off of anything. It's not a sequel or it a remake is or anything. based on something. It is, it is the best it's kind of your IP. age by it saying the, the Fall Guy is based IP. on nothing. I was just going to say this. One of <laughs> the, the forgotten benefits IP of this is the best IP. <laughs> okay, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Not not the kind that I'm I'm basing on. It's it's almost it's I put that in the same camp as like saying the 21 Jump Street's based on something. It's like sure, I sure. I hate you so much, Kevin. <laughs> <laughs> A sincere film from the director of Bullet Train. Never thought so I would see the much. day. Oh. No, that I mean it's it's true though. It was a TV show that was really popular in the late 70s and early 80s, and I know for a fact I'm the only one here that saw it. I, uh, I used to watch it too, <laughs> but it was a great in syndication, but it's so far from what we could even tap into nostalgia that it's, it, it's not like, you know, rebooting something from the year 2000. So there's a lot of benefit there. Yeah. All right. It is time for our third pick and that is going to Kevin. Okay, so we're we're following along with uh, this trend here by choosing movies like A Quiet Place Day One. It seems like we're we're like settling with movies with not the biggest budget, but we're pretty comfortable that they would perform well. So we decided to go with an action movie that surprisingly the previous movie did really really well on, and the budget's not that high for the new one, and so we're we're thinking. Bad Boys Ride or Die might be a pretty good pick. Let's go. Yeah. I like this. 
Yeah. What you gonna do? What you gonna do? I think this is a guaranteed not bad pick. That's what I'll say about it. I think the floor is high on this one. <laughs> and I'm just trying to... Well, I mean, really, if you look at... There's a possibility that Fall Guy is a, like, bad. Like, it could go bad. But bad Boys, the budget's low enough, and there's enough IP momentum behind it that it's going to at least give us some points. And, and that's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to climb up the mountain step by step to reach the top with the Kevin and Bob minions uh, looking down uh, on us from the from the peak. Listen, we're 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 just hoping to scrape by with our like three, four, and five picks here. Uh, let's you know, I I I'm hoping I've... that if we pile them on top of each other and hide them under a trench coat, it looks like a minion. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think it's a great pick, honestly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. these movies do well, and they have a big audience, and. I mean, the last one I think would have even done better if it hadn't gotten booed out of theaters because of the pandemic. So, you know, yeah, yeah. I think that, that was, was that, that was a movie that was one that of the reasons surprisingly well. Yeah, really well. And yeah. I, I, that's that was that's one of our our reasons for picking it is is that the it hadn't faded uh, for that film like we we definitely see. And this is this is certainly not really an element of nostalgia because. The last one was not that long ago. That one was a nostalgia release, essentially, because it had been a longer period of time. So, but, you know, in between then, we've had a slap and let's do a Will we, Smith breakdown. Here. Here's that's, the thing. Here's yeah. the thing. Here's the thing about at least that I think. If you if you are outside of the scope of whatever the the board of governors of the academy or Oscar people on Twitter, not only will it not matter if anything, it might help. It's going to be a reason <laughs> that <Yeah>. <laughs> people go because they want to make sure that Will Smith is uncancelled. And uncancel a bull. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So absolutely. I, I think it's going to work to his advantage and then ours. Yep. Yeah. I think I it's agree. a good pick on our list, too. Okay. All right. Guys, Go, I'm Sophia. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm not. Oh. I'm. I'm hmm, hmm. Go with your I, gut. If you feel like you need now. to swap the order, I support you. Okay. Team. I I'm not feeling this next one. It's a little it's it's very risky. What do we think? Just give me a thumbs up if we want to go with it cuz I know I was the one who was kind of like, "Uh, eh, I'm being a little conservative on this one." And I know you guys and Ryan were a bit higher. Honestly, mm. I mean, I, I like I said I'm new to this. I say go with your gut, but I also do think that this is a I think it's I think this pick. is the biggest risk that we would It take. is a risk. It's definitely a risk, but I also think it's a risk that has a lot of potential reward. And I also okay. feel like it's a risk that also is very much of a brand for us. Okay. Maybe we should just stick with it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. So Karen, Wait, from I'm what I'm hearing that that hasn't gone well for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, I, I think we just do it. It's fine. We're going to live on, on the edge. Karen, anyway. you reveal our next pick. Okay. Our next one is from director M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, uh, yeah. We had it. We, we, we weren't far First you all. <laughs> we actually kind of wanted to have this one. This is what I thought we were going to go with but... here. Oh, this but is the order fine. I had. Did I pick oh. the wrong one? It's okay. You're fine. This is okay. this is good. That's this is right. probably better. It's okay. It's, yeah. This is probably better. Uh oh. Interesting. <laughs> no, you're good. This is probably That's better. That's the way I have them in order. <laughs> you're fine. <laughs> you probably saved this, honestly. So. You honestly, this is this is a happy accident. <laughs> I'm thrilled. I well, want to know what the um, I want to know what the other one is going to be. <laughs> well, stay no, tuned. Later. Who knows? Call us after. Yeah. yeah. Who knows? <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, apparently, the reason that we definitely all agreed that this was the next one in line. I don't know. I, not a huge budget on this. 
And M. Night Shyamalan movies, even when mm. people don't love them, they do pretty well. They make some money. Yep. And the buzz on this one already is is pretty good. So, like, people are excited for the Josh Trailer Hartnett views. of it all. So. Yeah. I mean, Old mm. did just under $100 million without a star, like right. Josh Hartnett. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, Vicky Creeps, excuse How me. dare you, Dan? She's my How star. dare you? He said like I'm just saying Josh she's not on the <laughs> level of Josh Hartman. Okay? Yes. <laughs> In our hearts, she is the biggest star of all. Of course. But. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I think so. Yeah. Like anything like horror, suspense related in the summer is just an easy, that's easy money, I'm hoping. And he's a brand in, in himself, you know. So I'm His feeling good. Go in the trailers again. He's he's back now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This we we were we were definitely having this conversation. Uh, and and again, kind of like today even. Uh, and yeah, it's a it's a low bu- low budget. I, as being and... the most conservative member of our team, I was pushing this very hard because of the low. <laughs> yes. Budget. Yeah. I also, yes. I think I know which one Sophia was talking about. And 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 then I was convinced to even kind of rank it up higher. And you know the the trailer views are like twelve million in a couple of days. There definitely is a lot of hype for it, and there's a really funny hype that people are com- not complaining but commenting. That the whole twist is right there in the trailer when it's really just the setup. I think there's a whole lot more to be to be had there than the setup as as provided. So I yes, I think there's I think there's a lot of potential. And I will be at the cinema for Josh Hartnett. I will be there. Yeah. I'm just loving M Night Shyamalan's Twilight Zone, like heightened Twilight Zone uh, era. It's great. He has like a he has like a really he's got a talent in creating these instantly memorable setups mm-hmm. that you can just it makes word of mouth really really water. easy. You know, what if there's a beach that makes you old? You know, like it's so easy to like describe it and pass it on to your friends, you know. And so yeah, I see, seeing the trailer, it was like, oh, I'm locked in. Like I want to see this. Like like I instantly we know like the pieces are set like i'm i'm ready to go you know and yeah makes a lot of They're sense. the ultimate elevator pitch movies you just are like oh yeah that sounds good two sentences i'm in yep all right we are where are we at our fourth are we at fifth your fourth just, pick fourth oh my god there's still so much more to go we're we're doing a little bit of hemming and hawing right now. Yeah, um stuck here. this is this is <laughs> this is tough. Um I think I think we are yeah, I think I think we we are where we are. Uh and Dan is going to reveal our number 4 bit. You're making me do this one. Yes, Dan, you're oh, on Dan, the list. Dan, Dan, I, I Dan, I know your bias. <laughs> if you if you feel strongly about not doing the one that you've been fighting against, go with your heart. This is your pick and pick I, the other one. I, I I will go with my head over my heart on this one uh, because the rest of the team uh, brought up some very convincing arguments why this would be a good pick. Um. And also, I feel like we have not had a single full family corner of the marketplace pick yet, so it's good to cover that side of the operation with everyone's favorite voice actor, the crisp rat himself. We are going with the Garfield movie (laughs) as our fourth pick. (laughs) And I will say that the only reason that I was convinced to choose this was the budget on this is insanely low. We we have it at 60. 60? Which for a computer and That's about as many lasagnas film. as Garfield eats in a week. And, yeah, I mean, look, Mondays, Did right? Are writing the I Garfield mean... movie? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when you look back at the old films with Bill Murray, they didn't do so great. But those were live action animated hybrids, which are a tougher sell to the kiddos. And since the cartoon is such a huge worldwide 
thing. Perhaps a more cartoonish version of it will be able to do a little better at the box office, even with that voice actor. I was convinced <laughs> when I saw that there's a Garfield ride at Six Flags China. I was like, this is going to do great. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Truly. I mean, we it's are, hard to, we are uh, really, it's hard to really put that in the work. <laughs> we are putting all of our chips into communism instead of capitalism. And let's <laughs> fucking go. And cats. <laughs> cats. That's an interesting one, though. I mean, because Garfield as a property is just something where it's like it could really go either way. Like it could be just. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's bright, colorful animation. Just take the kids and plop them down. Or it could be like this thing from like decades ago. We're still doing Garfield. I don't care. No, we're not mm -hmm. doing that. So it is I, so illumination coded. It is insane. It is. It, it yeah. is. If you look but, at the trailers, but it's for a property that I just. It's hard to judge like how popular that really is. So it's yeah. It's one of those like if it works out, great. But I can also see people not really caring. So it it could go either way for sure. This was this was my argument exactly, but the mm -hmm. the family options are not all that many this summer, and yeah. this is one that I think parents can look at and know that they can take their kids to it immediately. Do well, I mean, that's a statistical hoping. model factor in rating. Uh, yes, it does indeed factor mm -hmm. in rating. Uh, I ha I ha however have a theory about animated features. Rotten Tomato scores, which is that they grade those things with kid gloves, yeah, so hard. Those scores are always so inflated. So, and also, I was having this conversation earlier. The way the scoring works, if we want to get into that, uh, it, it to to put it in Harry Potter terms, the box office is the golden snitch, right? You got everybody else playing with their quaffles, and there's so much other stuff going on. But at the end of the day, none of it matters. Who cares? The snitch is worth 300 points. You got to do a lot of stuff to make it not win the game in the first place. That, that's what the Rotten Tomatoes, uh, the, the critics ratings are. That's the quaffle. I'm over here. We're trying to be the seeker grabbing the snitch. Okay. And that's what we're doing with Garfield. You can go throw him through the hoops as many times as you want. We got the, we Again, got the snitch in our hand. We're praying that Garfield and Odie stacked on top of each other is mm. reads as minion. You I was going to say, we already caught the golden snitches. <laughs> yes, you, you, you definitely caught did. You snitch. caught the you, golden bananas. Okay. You, 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 <laughs> have, Banana. you have both. Yeah, those those animated features that should do very, very well for you. So, you know, we're this. We're just hoping to get by. <laughs> the model i will say the model likes this pick okay uh, the model likes it even I'm even with, with with like a low rotten tomato if, I will, it, I, it, it could still be i, I will really successful. say this if, if this model does right by this if this pick really does do as well as the model says i i will submit to our ai overlords i i am I'm here. You can take me. I, I'm ready. We currently have this modeled at a 45% critic score and still have it as a high value pick. Okay. So yeah, I th it'll do better than that. I, th I think it'll, I think it'll do a little bit better than that. Yeah. It'll probably be Armin White's favorite film of the year. So <laughs> there's that. Yes. Yes. God. It'll be he like, hates, he hates Garfield. Mondays. That guy over hates Mondays. Whatever big movie. <laughs> It's better than that. <laughs> um, okay, right. our last pick. Josh, we're back to you. Pick your poison. Mm. Yeah, because <laughs> I'm actually like going back and forth about Yeah, about I trust this. you. These are very different, but I, I trust mm. your judgment here. Is one okay. of these the ones that you almost picked last time? No, uh, I, I think we're... we're... <laughs> the yeah. moment of clarity has now <laughs> come upon us. And, yeah. Yes. <laughs> All right, then I After definitely I know just which one y'all were talking Garfield. about. Garfield. <laughs> <laughs> now the moment of clarity is upon you. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm I'm gonna go with the other one. Okay. I'm gonna do that. All okay. right. So for our last pick, we are gonna go still in the realm of horror, and also in the realm a franchise yep. because this particular franchise is weird. Well, I won't say weirdly because I do really like it, but it is very popular. And I think at this point, the character and the person playing this character has 
really gotten into the culture in a very palatable way. And at this point in the game, it is always just about breaking even. And I think there's enough elements that even if this isn't like a monster hit compared to the other ones, it'll do well enough so that we won't lose anything on it, which is, which is what we're betting on. And so for that, our last pick is going to be Maxine. Oh, yeah. I, I, as you were <laughs> I saying, love, that, okay, I, that I, is I, not I, what yeah. we thought. <laughs> No, I yeah. At first, you, you said that. you said horror franchise, and I was like, okay, obviously this is the layup pick. Wow! Like, but this character has become so established, and this actor, and I'm like, oh, he's not picking that one. He's picking Maxine, which is a that is a 100. percent You are going to make points off of that. That yeah. is going we'll to make a lot, make, but it will make ten times its budget, and it will get good reviews. And mm -hmm. so it's that's the, the game that we're playing the with the scale. Last pick. That's yeah. yeah, just isn't. Yeah, we always, I think, with like the fifth pick, just want to pick something that isn't super risky. Yeah. I feel like we're in a pretty good spot right now. I don't want to do anything outlandish. No, you you guys are absolutely in the place where your your number five can be uh, something like uh, a Maxine, and I love it. That's that's definitely one that we were talking about because that that two million dollar budget is just so appealing um although i i think the way that the uh the the metrics are for the game don't quite favor that small a budget the way that it, it should this this is the, the discussion i've had with ryan many times and Hopefully, with him not being here and not being able to uh, argue me with it, the next time we can have we can have a uh, uh, a metric that that does you know say Maxine, which is like a two million budget, right? Mm -hmm. I I had the old it, beat, the the last film Pearl was two. I haven't seen one for this one, but I assume it'll be somewhere in that like two to five range. That it'll be two to five. Past. Yeah. yeah. And say it makes 30, 35 million. If if you use, you know, like a a, a proper, you know, mm -hmm. relation of budget to the pure ratio. Yeah. Know, the, yeah. Then that's more successful that, than I minions. Think I yeah, that should be in the same did sort of think that it was a ratio. Yeah. <laughs> a it's bit. not exactly. <laughs> it's not exactly. It's it's moving in that direction from what mm -hmm. it used to be, which was just way more. There was there was no way that we could pick a a, a small film, and I think yeah. we we picked Black Phone that right. Yeah, we <laughs> one didn't. time thinking that that we'd be able to kind of sort of hit that sweet spot, but you know, and if, that did if, really well too. Mm -hmm. but it did really well, the but I think just isn't not there. as yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's really that. It's I mean, a I'm, no risk, low reward pick, mm -hmm. but I think it's a good pick, and I'm glad we shouted it out. Yeah, that is certainly the film that. I am most looking forward to this summer as a super fan of mm -hmm. X and Pearl. <laughs> yeah, I I think it's great. I I want to know, and I hope we get to see the extra that uh, she kicked in the head. I hope that cut mm -hmm. is in the film. Um, yeah, I I'm I'm excited for it. I think it's I think it's pretty oh, cool. And, yeah, and I I wonder because with Civil War bringing a24's box office profile up so much because they're not a box office studio i mean their their highest was uh everything everywhere and that wasn't in in speaking of the kind of you know box office movies that we're talking about is is not in the realm of a of a major studio so i think i think i think there could be just some visibility but you know I don't know. Well, it's also we'll a good it's also one that is, you know, the third film in a trilogy, but the trilogy is kind of loose. Like, I don't think you have to have seen X in order to see Maxine. Right. That's not how it feels right now. So it's that's that is going to be really interesting. Yeah. And even people that have never seen Pearl, you know, will post that I'm a star <laughs> section. <laughs> I've seen it on every Twitter and Instagram and TikTok from people that clearly did not see the movie, but they just think that it's mm -hmm. cool. So, yeah, I mean, they it's... haven't been posting about it in the most nice of terms, which 
<laughs> just watch the whole movie. It she's brilliant. <laughs> she is an icon. Okay. We are we are down to our last pick before we get into bomb territory. And I'm push I'm pushing it over to Jay. I'm gonna let him do our last pick. Uh I say, and then I, I think I, I think after this, we can do a little bit of, once yeah. we have our list, kind of mm-hmm. discuss the things that didn't make it that we were all talking about. And I think we're all dying to know uh, what what happened with you guys oh, and, you, and your pick. I, I can't we wait know what it to was. hear you know what, how know what it was. that turns out. No, <laughs> I know. Um, but yes, Jay, reveal our final selection. Yeah, I say shame on your team for playing it safe. I say damn the torpedoes. I'm going expensive. I'm going a little bit unknown. We're going kingdom of the planet of the apes (laughs) with our final pick. This thing is expensive. The franchise has been mostly pretty reliable, but this is in many ways kind of a reboot-ish. I know it is a continuation of the previous story, but it is almost completely stripping away any human characters. In a lot of ways, this is an experiment to figure out, do we need people in our movies? Uh, which is very interesting. <laughs> but uh, well, it's know, they're taking a little bit of, of the Avatar boost. approach without the Cameron-ish. How's that, Dan? It's gotten a bit of a boost uh, this past week when everyone sort of realized that one of the cast members of Abigail was in one of the apes in this movie. So that's gotten a bit of free extra advertising. Well, there you go. There's an extra one and a half million right there. Exactly. We're too, almost, yeah, we've almost too, too bad back. Abigail was a flop this weekend. So. <laughs> Sadly. <laughs> Wait, who from Abigail is in this? Uh, Kevin Durand. Yeah. Oh, okay. I was like, is Dan Stevens in this movie too? <laughs> <laughs> no, He's in sure seven in other 24 in movies. Other so. movie. <laughs> I love his movie career so it far. Truly. Whatever's happening with it. Goodbye, I think about Abby. it. Perfect. Yeah, I I think like future future drafts need to be actors. Like, and we can just pick yes. actors that have like four things coming out in a year. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna oh, throw that out there. But this is there's uh, a lot of yeah. potential for some money making here, and there's also a chance that people are like, what? Like this? It's like a bunch of monkeys. I don't want to see that. I mean, that could happen too. But <laughs> I think What's there's the a reliability factor. I think it's the what, what we have the budget yeah. at 190, yeah. which is pretty yeah. high. 190 high. is high. The last so, one made 500. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that was obviously kind of the capper on the trilogy. And that was the lowest of the yeah. those grossing. They, but they were all, none of them were like grossed a whole lot more than the others. They've been very consistent. I think it will make money at the very least. And I think it will get pretty good reviews, I imagine. And PG-13, so. so everybody can go see it. Yeah. Apes. Okay. Apes, yeah. Um, Look, we had to have one giant animal in our lineup. And we, have to, Gar- we have Garfield. She's to so. Kevin yeah. Costner. Sorry, Kevin. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, yeah. uh, we can yeah. talk about that. <laughs> we'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, all right, let's. Um, before we get to the our bomb picks, and my team does get to uh, pick the bomb pick because you picked first, obviously, which was the smart choice. Um, Let's recap what each of our teams has. And Team Ryan, a.k.a. Team Sophia, uh, has Despicable Me 4, Inside Out 2, The Fall Guy, Trap, and Maxine. And Team Eric, our team, has Deadpool and Wolverine, A Quiet Place Day 1, Bad Boys Ride or Die, the Garfield movie and Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes. So not a single original in the bunch. I look at this list in despair. I <laughs> want to cry <laughs> at this list. Um, but let's go. Let's go for some bombs, and then we'll That's discuss good. just the 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 almost and the and the close calls. And everything else, because there's a lot of films uh, that we could be potentially just missing, uh, but we definitely want to talk about them and give some some context. Uh, I will go ahead and reveal our bomb pick. 
And this is not a movie I think that any of us want to be a bomb. Uh, visually, it is extremely appealing. Um, the poster alone is lovely. I had a feeling this was about to happen. Yeah, like, <laughs> you know, could be better. Could yeah. be better. Uh, considering what we have seen. Uh, but between the weird decision to hold the release to when it's being released and the budget, obviously, which was a consideration, we are going with Craven the Hunter as our bomb pick mm -hmm. for you guys. But, you know, Aaron Taylor Johnson, I yeah. wish nothing but the best for him. Except for now here. I, now I have a reason to go see this and give it money. <laughs> I mean, that is I'm going to see it now. six times. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just go see Aaron Taylor Johnson. Just see this, the ticket. This is why Oppenheimer did so well because <laughs> Josh and Ryan and Sophia saw it like 10 times in the theaters. <laughs> Literally. Not an exaggeration, by the way. It's yeah. Not Josh has literally spent several days watching yeah. Oppenheimer. <laughs> oh my god. But yeah, it's you know, I, I don't yeah. I don't imagine it's gonna get, you know, a very healthy uh uh review score either, but it just feels and we had a handful of a bomb looking kind of picks. There's I think there's a potential for a shitload of bombs this year um mm -hmm. but yeah that that 120 million budget was was hard to kind of get past but yeah yeah look the sony spider-verse is already the stuff of cinematic legend with the year's big box office bomb everyone's favorite madam web okay i kind of liked madam web i mean um, i did too but yeah <laughs> I would personal considerations yeah, do not factor right. into this. <laughs> like if you if you get if I think it's the first movie where I've I've seen a character like be killed by a logo, it just was <laughs> sent me to space. <laughs> oh, the first movie we've seen where it was sabotaged from within from its own cast. It's kind of amazing. It's just why she was planning on wearing that outfit to a funeral i will never know there's just so much there um but our bomb pick you know i'll do the honors with this one when i think of you know, something that i want to see over the summer i'm definitely thinking of zachary levi growing up and drawing himself oh, into yeah. a book harold <laughs> and the purple crayon <laughs> That what if this just makes five hundred million? What if this makes five hundred million dollars? Look, look, look! Gen Z Green Lantern, starring Shazam, is all the kids want to see. Okay. <laughs> I I just I can't believe this is a movie where, and I think for bomb picks, sometimes you have to go with the movie that you feel is just not actually real, and that's how I <laughs> felt about this since I first saw that poster. <laughs> I hadn't even heard about this movie somehow me, me when we were talking about it. And they sent me the trailer and I was like, what am I watching? What? This looks what? like fan art. <laughs> yeah. So something that I was like, how is this a real thing? This, yeah, this was a budget on it. I will say I did. I couldn't find a budget, but we saw sound. We saw. Yeah. We had 60 million. Okay. I would be shocked if it makes that back. That's yeah. That yeah. This 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 was not like as our bad alt. as it could be, but <laughs> this was our alt. This was our alt in yeah. in this section because every single thing about it either doesn't look real or is just so gobsmackingly fucking stupid <laughs> that there's there's no way anyone's gonna go to see this and this really is... underestimating levi's star power i'm telling you <laughs> i'm telling shazam, you baby shazam and the source of Although that it... is zachary levi <laughs> if, if it outgrosses shazam i will laugh my ass off <laughs> uh yeah this is this it's a good pick then no one is going to give a fuck about this movie no we no, also we wanted to pick something it. that you guys wouldn't want to go see over and over again to boost that box yes. office score <laughs> Little do you know, I've already bought tickets. Yeah. 
<laughs> Little do you know, Jay has already reserved his son's birthday party. He's reserved that cinema for Harold and the Purple Crayon. I'm a proud member of the Crayon Hive. 100%. Yes. <laughs> I live Good choice, in suckers. Box. <laughs> this is one of those things where you look at this and I did not know it existed. And they said Zachary Levi and Harold and the Purple Crayon. And I'm like, oh, so he's doing the voice of Harold in this <laughs> animated version of the book, right? And then they say, no, it's live action. And you go, who it looks like, like that? Yeah, it looks why? like a fake movie why? from 30 Rock. Is what it, it really like. does. <laughs> yeah. It really does. And, 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 and nobody said psych. They, it just, yeah. it's... <laughs> It just happens. It's happening. Uh, it's, it, it's, it just did. It went right through. All right. Uh, so that is our our bomb picks for each of our teams. My team picked uh, Craven the Hunter, and Ryan's team picked <laughs> apparently <laughs> Harold and the Purple Crayon. Uh, yeah, we'll see how far nostalgia goes for that film. Um, yeah, but. This, I want to open up the floor for us to talk about the things coming out this summer that didn't really uh, make our list or maybe got really, really close because there are more than a handful of really big films, uh, big sequels, and we already have a lot of sequels on our list, but it's summer, so there's a whole lot more. Uh, And I think the two that I want us to talk about First, uh, are pretty clearly uh, Furiosa, Mad, a Mad Max saga, and Twisters. Because so both of damn those... expensive. What are you yeah. guys yeah. doing? Yes. I... Both of those obviously were in our conversation, mm-hmm. but... I, Twisters was my number one pick until I saw that the budget yeah. was 200 million because I had thought that it was like the 100 to 150 range, which was like, that makes sense. But 200 is just ludicrous. Yeah. For, and for and I do, I do think it's going to make enough it's money that well, that yeah. would have been an okay pick, but it might not. <laughs> and that's, it just, it felt risky. Yeah, I was that's something alert. we probably the one that we 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 we, we might knew. have considered we that <laughs> if we thought that we were going to get Despicable Me and then yeah. we could r- ride a little freer. Yeah, it might it might be fun to 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 see Twisters potentially uh, showing up here. And it, again, this is a movie I want to do extremely well. Yeah. I want we great do, things for yeah. for yeah. the one I'm looking forward to the most. I want obviously Glenn Powell to be the biggest star in the world. Uh, oh, and star! This is, oh, okay, this is okay. his test. The summer belongs to Glenn Powell. Okay, <laughs> mm-hmm. between yes. this and Hitman actually getting supposedly a run in theaters, it's going to have a normal Netflix run in theaters. So yeah. it's like a, that, yeah. a week so and a half. Sad. So sad, but oh. no, that's a great but, movie yeah. though. <laughs> I can't Excellent. wait to see that too. Yeah. I still haven't seen yeah, that. Yeah, I, th- I think there's, I think there's potential there. And then poster rocks. And then we have Furiosa, which is a really interesting case. It's going to be at Cannes. It's coming out not like right after that. Um, and where we kind of looked at this was, there's definitely a lot of appeal and hype to it, and people seem really, really excited. But even the first movie, with all of its success is not a super successful yeah movie financially, financially yeah mm-hmm. people forget it's that true. you know they they remember the oscar success of that film but when you really look at the box office it was pretty underwhelming and it wasn't until later yeah. when the critics came around and said no yeah. we love this movie push it for awards and people think it's this huge success but that movie was not really well received initially and yeah i i agree that i think that the memory of Fury Road colors people's perspective of how well this one might actually do. Oh, it's a Mandela effect completely. Yeah. Like, like it, like it made five hundred million dollars. In yeah, it did not do that. US. It was actually one hundred and thirty yeah. million dollars yeah. budget. budget. Unbelievable! That's crazy. It is. It, I believe it's the second biggest budget of our list potentially. After Deadpool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Once, once things all come out in the wash. So, oof. but you know. It could be massive. I want to see it. it. That is one where I'm really interested because of how the opinion on Fury Road has just only grown 
over time. You know, like I feel like as more people have watched it, but it is possible that Furiosa does. Well, that's the thing. It's a like, film it's Twitter possible. movie. It's yeah. possible that Furiosa does do better than Mad Max, but it's probably not going to do as well as it needs to to make points in this game yeah. because it would need to make over 500 million worldwide to do that. There, there's also the idea of like, like it has so much pressure riding on it. Mm. You know, now, now people are going to go in expecting it to be like Fury Road again. And if it isn't, man, that word of mouth is going to really affect it. Yeah. Yeah. Should we talk about Horizon and American? <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Can we? Yes. Not? The, the, the Costner was was invoked, yeah. so he has been Is summoned. The Yellowstone crowd gonna show up? That's, it's gonna make maga millions. It's very interesting. <laughs> Very it's interesting. Also, the reason why we considered it is because it's a hundred million for both parts. So if we just pick part one, no, 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 a, no, 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 it's a hundred million no. each. Yeah, it's a hundred million each. I saw a hundred million combined. I saw multiple sources okay. saying it's a hundred million. A well, piece. that's good that we didn't take it. That's great. Um, yeah, will they show up? I don't know. I also am like, is this going to be like the the sound of freedom? No, no, I, I truly, I see a world you know? where both of those make three hundred million each. Like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's ab- risky. Absolutely, it's yeah. very risky. Like um, also, there's also like Westerns. no foreign appeal with that one either. Yeah, yeah. Part of the no, there, it is just domestic box office. Yeah, westerns are a tough sell. We don't really know how much action it's going to have, which is the thing that would make really make money uh, in the summer. But on the other hand, like this could be potential good, like classy counter programming to all the blockbusters happening, or if or if frustratingly become a culture well. war sticking point, mm-hmm. or that. Oh I mean, like this it's could... a civil war, if you will. Yes. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's not go <laughs> there. What kind of Costa fan are you? <laughs> <laughs> what kind of Costa fan are you? The bodyguard. That's amazing. Modern world. <laughs> That's amazing. Postman. <laughs> I am I am very curious though, because this is coming out the same day as a quiet place. And there are a few movies that are going head to head this summer, including Garfield and Furiosa. What a matchup that's going to be. <laughs> um but yeah, with with this, you know, if 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 we have picked a quiet place and Horizon has, you know, a 50, 60 million opening. You know, then then we look dumb, <laughs> and I hope not. I hope we don't. Well, it's also going to be interesting because I don't think we've had a like franchise that has released all its films within a same season before. Like the closest thing I can think of was the Matrix that had part two and mm-hmm. three released in the same year, but mm-hmm. that was like one near the beginning and one near the end. This is they're both coming in within two months of each other. So with if, two more planned if they do well. If they do well. So like if this is if the first part does really well and gains word of mouth, gains positive word of mouth, then the second one could also do well because it's not like people have to wait they know they're getting the second part and they know they're getting it soon. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, it's, it's not crazy to think that the, the Yellowstone fans whose great appeal for the show is, or was Costner might want to follow him here. Or will they think it'll just be on TV eventually? Yeah, that's the maybe way. they think it already is. Maybe they just think it's <laughs> Yellowstone. Too. I yeah. will say the one thing I was disappointed by with that trailer was it kind of looks like a TV show. But... Well, we'll the, the cast is that giving was the one thing you were TV movie. So <laughs> well, I, I was excited. I was excited. I was excited to see like a big epic Western. Some guy just like saying I might have to sell one of my mansions if this movie does poorly. And then I saw it. I was just like, "This looks like nothing. This doesn't look like much of anything." I feel like he already did to finance the film. Like, I'm <laughs> yeah. just so I can't say like I'm excited about the movie, but I'm excited about the mindset of this. I'm movie. excited about the idea like, of the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, it just feels like it's from like a man who has way too much money who's going through a divorce, and this is his <laughs> like 
crisis right now. And it's like, yeah. fine, I'm I'm making my epic Western I've wanted to do for years. So, and it just seems like we are witnessing a crazy person <laughs> assemble something. But so, I am so fascinated by it. Well, so and this is this red, is also red state megalopolis is what you're saying. There you go. This is also a megalopolis comparison. Megalopolis. <laughs> It's I, I wish this was coming out in, for us to 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 be a part of this. Uh, it, it it is also coming out as a result of Costner's combativeness with Ty, whatever his name is, Sheridan. Taylor Sheridan. Taylor, Taylor, Taylor Sheridan. Taylor. I was gonna say Ty, Ty Sheridan. Taylor. Taylor. Uh, very very not different him. people. Di- Eric. Different fight. Uh, <laughs> Maybe the same level yes. of talent though. And you know, <laughs> wanting to do wanting to do his own thing. So yeah. And Josh, you'll be seeing both Furiosa and Horizon at Cannes in just a month's time. So you'll at least have some tea for us to see what you think a French audience thinks of the American West, which weirdly looks like a really disgusting throwback to Cowboys versus Indians where the Cowboys are the good guys. Yeah. Weird looking to me. I I'm very fascinated to see what the response of that movies going to be i i have no idea i kind of don't feel like it's going to be great but we'll see i'm excited for just whatever he's doing to be honest with you like even if it's not great i i'm just interested that he is a filmmaker giving us a purely like personal project which we just don't see that much anymore so i respect the swing even if it misses yeah um what else from this summer coming out did you guys have circling your list uh that didn't make it alien not you i'm asking she was Sophia. asking the other team well oh. i mean i was gonna say i was gonna say that alien romulus next but really most of the ones we were seriously considering were picked either we got them or you guys got them so it kind of felt like there was sort of a clear direction it was going i think yeah i i don't know what to make of alien at all um i do like the trailer looks fun um excited for anything kaylee spadey does after priscilla but that was one where we just weren't sure we could bank on it. It was actually for us similar sort of to, I think the planet of the apes movie where we just didn't really know how it would go and weren't really sure what they would think of, you know, this, this part of the franchise. I mean, they are re-releasing alien for its anniversary, which could and I am help, going. How yeah. Far, yeah. I am too, yeah. Yeah. Hell how yeah. far can that take Good it? Good film. Mm-hmm. Excellent. One of the best movies ever made, but yeah, yep. it's like alien as a, as a property just feels like I don't have that much faith in it. And I don't know if it has that much staying power anymore. And I all due respect to Ridley Scott. I don't think those movies really did much to strengthen that brand. And that was so long ago too, that Mm -hmm. I, I just don't know. And you know what? I even think about how the first Omen just came out and like tanked. Mm. I don't think there's as much reverence for these like old properties anymore, even if they've been around for a while, they've had a ton of sequels and have been profitable. I, I get nervous about that. Even something as recognizable as alien. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. So as much as I am looking forward to that movie from a mass appeal scale, I feel like I've seen too many instances where these old properties just don't do well that in, in this modern environment. And yeah, we were nervous about that. Yeah. One thing about it is it's pretty inexpensive. Yeah, it's it has really a super expensive. low budget, mm-hmm. but then consider that like the last Alien movie, Alien Covenant, on- barely hit 250 yeah. million worldwide. And they steered it, way into the Alien uh, much more than Prometheus yeah, with that one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this, and I know that like the whole deal is that this is supposed to place between Alien and Aliens, but I don't think that most casual moviegoers really care about that they just see oh no it's another alien movie Eh, they i'm kind of done with those i mean it looks like they're trying to actually like market it as almost a reboot ish of yeah. the first alien since the set looks exactly like the nostromo it it kind of feels like that's what mm-hmm. they're trying to do but again, it feels I very um very back to basics and like it if it's any good like i i very much support their approach in dialing the budget back and making it simpler and bring bring out the guy who rebooted evil dead and i and like, like fede alvarez 
Yeah, to like really tap into those horror fans who will be there to watch the gnarly shit, you know. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's going to be nasty. That's so I'm excited Mm -hmm. for that. It's going to be gross. But if we're talking about horror movies like with low budgets that are potentially going to do well, that I was really pushing the watchers and long legs for our team because I feel like either of those could turn into big word of mouth hits especially like the the sneakily brilliant marketing campaign for long legs that they have been running like i incredible stuff i can't wait to see long legs that one kind of felt like a maxine type pick to me where i just like felt more i think confident in what we already knew about maxine and audiences being familiar with it but i hope long legs does really well because i love this like spooky 70s horror vibe that we're getting from the marketing it's it really is- funny when you when you guys when you were doing your setup for maxine i'm pretty sure most of us thought you were talking about alien yep i did when you when when you <laughs> were horror and franchise i could see everybody and it was on our <laughs> list in our 10 i think it was at like nine or something uh depending on how the breakdown mm-hmm. was going to be so we were like oh okay they're picking uh Romulus shock it was not <laughs> um to 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 Dan's thought what horror is doing this year is really weird weird yeah and not very successful but there was something appealing and Dan put it in like his list to 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 push for it was the watchers because it's M Night Sh- Shyamalan's Summer daughter, Shana, baby, <laughs> is Shana, who is the pop star in Trap, and the I first think the Gen Z this. director of a major. She'll studio also be the film. first. She will be the first Gen Z director of a studio of a major and studio this, film. That was the one movie that we had on kind of our list that didn't get picked. So yeah, mm-hmm. we we had this conversation too it's uh there's something those, maybe there mm-hmm. it's one of those things where like we were we couldn't find a budget for it but there's no way it's big yeah. like it's yeah. it's dakota fanning yeah. in a cabin how I expensive mean, can it be <laughs> <laughs> it will be funny if the watchers does better than trap we have it a little would be, mm-hmm. but then, Shyamalan but like, we down. looked closer, Eric. <laughs> how many? Uh, what was the difference in YouTube trailer views? <laughs> well, that, I mean, that was that was the thing. The Watchers has been out for a month. It was like at ten million from the from the Warner Brothers, uh, who has like seven movies this summer. I don't mm-hmm. know how they're doing it, other than Barbie mm-hmm. money, but they have so many movies. Uh, and and then yeah, and then something right, man. Trap was twelve million in three days. So not too surprising, go. not too surprising for that. But and I think it's still early, but I, there is more than enough potential to to sell them not together, but like as a as a thing. And it's kind of wild that hers is coming out first. Yeah. Well, and I think the thing about the watchers is that could do that thing that we don't see much anymore that we talked about earlier, which is that word of mouth growth mm. where people go see it opening weekend. They're like, holy crap, this was really good. And they tell all their friends and then people just go over the next couple of weeks. It could do that or it could do the exact opposite. Yeah. Well, Before we were looking talk, at- talk about someone who's going to have an unbelievable amount of. Like stress on their shoulders to have anything any any movie it's if it doesn't have like a a good enough twist it it, it, i don't i i i'm not sure she's going to be able to have uh a a fair comparison (laughs) made Mm -hmm. nepo babiness or not i'm gonna go ahead and guarantee this will be better than her dad's worst movie so okay. she's, she's got that going for her. What a well, I mean, it'll be hard. <laughs> yeah. bar. One worse bar, than his indeed. worst. But it was interesting, like looking at, we were trying to find um, like com- points of comparison for these movies. And it was really interesting because I felt like the last horror adjacent movie that I remember people really having like word of mouth, like you need to see this movie was Barbarian. 
which only ended up making about like 45, 50 million worldwide. And then the other one that Eric mentioned was Talk to Me, which made all over mm. 90 million. Which that was a big, it, big movie. And both of those had like super duper small budgets, mm-hmm. but not quite 100 million yeah. worldwide. This is, see, this is what we're hoping happens with Maxine. Mm-hmm. I There's a chance comes, Maxine hits like yeah. 60. I would love that. Me that too. just seems so the trailer is so not great. possible. It's I mean, that does so amazing. Amazing. I, I would say very like, unlikely, but yeah. I mean, because Pearl made what? Like, I mean, how much 30? did X make? 20? Not enough. I think, I, I think less than you think. Yeah. I want a team yeah. that I can. Pearl play. made 10 million. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 10. Yeah. Yeah, Sophia. <laughs> But we still had, you know, we still had COVID stuff happening when that came out. Like it, mm-hmm. it was that was I mean, still a X factor. only made X only made fifteen million, and I think Pearl is a lot more esoteric in terms mm-hmm. of the audience it was looking for than X. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> the one movie that I want to shout out that hasn't been talked about this this movie already doesn't exist. Eli Roth's Borderlands movie is coming out this summer. One of you our know, picks. Was yeah, it was. It, it feels know, it like a perfect bomb pick. Yeah. yeah, but it's interesting though. Like for it, Jay, is that budget that you have like is that official? Uh, according to Bob's budget blog, I knew it. I knew oh, it. Whenever you Bob, think Bob's budget, uh, like, I'm just thinking of the minion actually like doing all yeah. the budget calculations. I'm thinking like, of Bob's only... papers from uh, King Arnold. I'm <laughs> thinking of Bob's burger. So yeah. yeah. <laughs> And like I keep thinking BBB, the Better Business Bureau. But like, are, you, are you saying only, it's too high or too low? No, like only a hundred million for that movie is like it could easily do poorly. But but mm-hmm. it fans looks low of the budget, video though. games are international, yeah. so mm-hmm. this could. And the fact that it is super actiony and very colorful, it could do well internationally. But I'm not banking on it. Mm-hmm. And this yeah, is just, I'm, it's I'm, just that game was popular so long ago. That's like making a Flappy yeah. Bird movie right now. Uh, I'm, but I'm always rooting for video game adaptations to do well because they're they're so hard to get right. But but when they do get it right, it's like just awesome to see. And I, and I and feel I, like they do better as TV series, mm-hmm. i.e., Fallout. Yeah. But yeah, Fallout having really really good reception, and Last of Us, of course. Yeah, yeah. But then there's also movies like uncharted yeah. or <laughs> or uh, I'm a, I'm a Kander, proud, tomb raider you know i'm a proud wow. defender of assassin's creed i will say oh uh, i think that movie's got a lot of stuff going on oh. directed so, by oh. instagram filter no, prince of persia not. prince of persia if i could talk about that i won't oh what a shock <laughs> i did see that but <laughs> I mean, I saw a underrated <laughs> masterpiece. It will it, history will look very uh, unkind mm-hmm. to that original release and response, and sure. that's how yeah. I believe but that yeah, to happen. Such great casting. But yeah, I, and the other thing that made me like feel really bad about Borderlands was just just seeing last year, like seeing how much um, Dungeons and Dragons underperformed. You know, and that movie was so much fun. It you know, was. it's such it's such a crowd pleaser. It's the kind of movie you want to watch, like in, as a group in the theater. And it's just, and we and like people tried really hard about the word of mouth, like go see this. This is actually a lot of fun. And although, like, I'm wondering really if that one would have done better if it didn't have that Dungeons and Dragons appended to the front. Right, yeah, uh, that's the that, honor among thieves thing, or, or, wizard, or no, no, no. It's uh, I, uh, Dan. Correct me if correct me if I'm wrong. I think you're, I think Dan was talking about how the the movie being so clearly based on D and D that it the actually turns turn off that it actually yeah. turns off people who have not played D and D before. Yeah, or they and, think that they have to have played in order to understand what's right, going on because D and D is such a such a niche thing. Like it doesn't have a plot. You, right. you know, like you right. make it up as you go. So I think that was a huge barrier to a perceived barrier to entry, yeah. even though yeah. you did not. There were lots of things in there that if you have played Dungeons and Dragons, you get and is even funnier. But there is 
there was not the high barrier to entry that people thought there was. Yeah, I, I, I totally agree with that, Dan. I feel like that barrier of entry, that's something that like a lot of video game adaptations just naturally have. It just makes people feel like, I've never played that game before, I'm nah, you know, not, not going to see it. The, your exceptions are like the ones that are so universally beloved, like, like Mario, for example. Like, oh, I don't need to play the games because Mario is a character, you know, so I, I can go see that. You know. It's not even necessarily entirely just, I haven't played that game, so I won't get it. It's also, I haven't played that game because I'm not interested in it, so why would I want to watch a movie about it? Yeah. Mm. The one movie so that I think will make a billion dollars is Summer Camp with Diane Keaton, Kathy Bates, and Alfre Woodard. Look, it will be a crime this is just, if this it is doesn't. Just book club it will be a off. blockbuster of book club cinema. <laughs> yes. I, like, I'm here for it. <laughs> I just want to know, like, why Diane is wearing a turtleneck in a suit in North Carolina at presumably a summer camp. Um, because that is all she wears. That's Kathy, her word. Yeah. It's relatable. She cares but... <laughs> not for the weather, Sophia. <laughs> Kathy Bates' wig. That, like, it has to... That wig. A lot of money. I just the best wig outside of Palm Royale. What a, what a film! <laughs> yes, what a film. <laughs> I, I, I need, I need that wig. I need that movie very, <laughs> very much. The, um, I'll I, say the I, one I think, thing that I, I think there's a there's an elephant in the room here. A movie that we're just not talking about. Uh, there are several, <laughs> and there are several. But uh, speaking of. Uh, visionary filmmaker John Krasinski, oh, and yeah. this also oh, could have been this, maybe that, a bomb pick. No, no clue it's what a, to do with this. I one. did think about it's it. It's a movie that stars <laughs> Ryan Reynolds, John Krasinski, Steve Carell, Phoebe Waller Bridge, Matt Damon, Emily Blunt, Maya Rudolph, John Stewart, Christopher Maloney, Aquafina. And that and is somehow only costs 70 million. The hell this thing is called if imaginary friends, imaginary friends, horrible SEO, horrible, the worst, <laughs> only to be matched by and when yeah. that comes out next <laughs> <Yeah>. year. <laughs> I think there's an but, argument to be made that Ryan Reynolds is the most evil force currently operating in Hollywood. Mm -hmm. Oh, I, I don't think it's an argument. I think it's a fact. Well, y'all clearly don't watch Welcome to Wrexham, or else you would <laughs> feel differently. But I just think there's something weird about this movie. I Maybe don't so know what imaginary to... movies, imaginary, imaginary friends. I don't. I and two. purple, going. purple what friends yeah, too. Purple crayon yeah, movie. Purple crayon. Yeah. What's going on? This movie, like, I I genuinely watched that trailer. I'm like, is this for? kids is it for adults is it for teenagers well, who is the audience well, honestly movie? it feels like a movie that john krasinski wanted to make for his kids yeah and just called in a bunch of favors from his friends like it all this mm -hmm. honestly feels like a big budget home movie that he's just yeah. putting on and yeah. we, he just conned his friends at a studio to give him a bunch of money to make it oh they all worked for scale clearly <laughs> Mm -hmm. 70 million dollar budget come on <laughs> yeah i think there george clooney's in it too movie. isn't he in it too i don't know it's crazy I think bradley cooper has a cameo in it yeah that it's did really well for dungeons and dragons, dragons so yeah. that was hilarious that was the best cameo <laughs> that's the only that reason why i saw it i heard <laughs> about so the cameo <laughs> <laughs> that cameo was incredible but the fact that this the fact Look, there was another thing that I was considering for a bomb pick because there is no way on this earth that Fly Me to the Moon should have cost $100 million. What the fuck? Googling. That's the Chris Evans <laughs> and yeah. Scarlett Johansson. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's a yes. drama. Uh, it's um, oh. Channing Tatum. Yeah, oh, Channing yeah, Tatum, not Chris Evans. Oh, Russo's daughter. yes. Gosh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which that that's right. hundred million. Really? Oh, Girl. My God. Oh. I don't know. It's a it's a space movie. There's a there's a lot of things going on there. That's an apple. That's a space movie, movie that is mostly movie. on the ground. Like and they're faking the, the space part. Yeah, it? it's <laughs> on the ground. Very weird. This is the most Apple TV Plus coded movie you could oh. dream up. 
Wow. It is Apple though, right? Isn't it? Are they no. actually releasing I, it? I think that's an Apple because movie. Because that would make sense. Oh, mm. I don't know. I'm pretty sure it is. Or is it? Yeah, Apple know? Studios. Apple Studios. Yep. Yeah. Same. yeah. Apple Original is but it? What, so, okay, but go. what Apple does yeah. to the mild credit of how ridiculous it all sounds, they pay all their people up front. I'm pretty yeah. sure they don't have all the back end stuff, so the budgets are going to be automatically inflated a little bit. Well, yeah, because because their yeah. their their deals come yeah. with whoever they choose as their distributor, and and that's you know Sony right. or Paramount and or it, yeah. anybody that does. It is going in theaters, but I think it's kind of built into those contracts that like you're paying yeah. us, like this is going straight to streaming. Yeah, basically. Yeah. What's happening in Channing Tatum? What what's why? What's happening? Oh. He used to be so good. You know, the lost boy. City. he was so great in the exactly. Lost City. Mm -hmm. So great in the Lost City. Yeah, I like and the I, Lost City. The, the actual, eligible. Actually, the movie he directed, Dog, is much better Dog than it had good. any right to be. Yeah. Dog, Dog good. I feel Dog like good. Kevin Costner would want to make a movie like Dog. Yes. Actually. I feel like Mark Wahlberg would Kevin, what Horizon Mark is. Wahlberg. Mark Wahlberg Horizon tried. Is his dog. Okay. Mark Wahlberg <laughs> tried to make a dog movie. And you know what? No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kevin Costner wishes he could make a dog movie as good as <laughs> dog. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I'm not sure if we have a whole lot of other things here because I'm looking at the list and we really kind of went through. Yeah. Uh, I mean, we're clearly we talk about Reagan. Sleep Dennis yeah, yeah I saw that on your list and I'm like finally coming out. I say finally serious? because I keep see I've seen this, I swear, for five years that this dreaded Dennis Quaid Reagan biopic is coming. Oh, this is it's finally coming out. Oh finally. It's gonna be great. <laughs> hey, look, we're obviously all sleeping on the box office sensation that is back to black. Oh, don't get me started. Mm. I can't talk it's going to it's watch it do it's... Bohemian Rhapsody numbers and we're all just sitting here like idiots. Look, that will gross 500 million in England alone, okay? <laughs> I was I was truly shocked by how bad it was, and I expected to not like it. I mm. I went in with very low expectations and it was somehow worse. Actually, I think wow. if anyone's going to hate it more, it will be England. Mm -hmm. that, that, that's yeah. truly the like what have they done to my boy like i'm looking at poor eddie marsan in this movie like what have they done to my boy? absolutely yeah. not. they massacred my boy absolutely <laughs> not um yeah other there's there's not much there's the tarot movie which is oh. also coming out the same day as, as fall guy but that yeah. totally <laughs> fell into that like yeah. horror movie that just will be uncared about mm -hmm. like say that about the yeah. strangers prequel as well yeah the yeah the strangers part one based on a novel oh, pushed yeah. by sapphire mm -hmm. no. nope nope not i gotta say this that. slate is a little grim it's mm -hmm. super not, grim. not yeah, loving that's it. what we said up front <laughs> yeah i know yep <laughs> <laughs> that's 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 yeah that's kind of i how yeah. why i wanted to open it that way because we're looking at it going yeah, we're going to pick five movies each, but it doesn't feel. It didn't feel like there were ten movies. Yeah, that was yeah. kind of the thing when getting to the to the bottom of our list was like, wow, we're mm -hmm. actually underneath the barrel now. It wasn't good. No, but I'm glad that say, we did this, the, and I love my team. Yes, the, uh, I do too. You know what? There is. We do get two pieces of book club cinema this year because in addition to summer camp we also get the fabulous four susan sarandon megan mullally shamara lee ralph and the divine miss and bet midler oh you're right wow. so we have a lot much to be thankful for this summer it's a big summer for 11 a.m screenings <laughs> right oh my <laughs> right? prime time screening <laughs> <laughs> we, you know, you have brunch. You get some popcorn, a glass of rosé. What the hairs will be blue? Is the best spring time. Really? Sunday at eleven. Uh, our I proprietary can't. model. We've run the numbers. Um, <laughs> this is predicting a slight victory for Team Ryan slash Sophia, but it is extraordinarily close. We've got a predicted uh, one billion twenty-eight million points. What a ridiculous scoring system this is. 
one billion twenty eight million for Team Sophia and one billion and twenty one million for our team. So we are splitting hairs. Uh, wow. Thanks again to yeah, uh, Price Waterhouse Cooper. Now I'm going to go see Craig working with Craven us on that proprietary model. Yeah. Well, we'll, we we will we will post up at Craven. The I will buy negative tickets. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for Bob's Burgers box office to come through for us <laughs> with this uh, the numbers for our model. Oh boy! Uh, yeah, all right. I think that's. I think. I think we're good. I think this is as much as we can talk about the summer box office as it deserves, actually. And we will return to this conversation. I think. I think we're probably September, October. Uh, whenever our, I think we have those, a couple of those August releases that Craven is, is an August release. So once we, we have like a very finite look at, at numbers, uh, we will revisit this and see who has won. In well, the meantime, be in theaters for like three days. So that's, you know, happen. if it even actually makes it, maybe it'll just get pulled and go VOD. If it's Sony writes surprise it off, everyone. If, if it's a tax write off, <laughs> do we give them the write off to their score, or <laughs> do they get to write it off to their? Box we get to we get to, we get to actually write. We off get to write it off write off ours, ourselves. Yes. <laughs> so that's how that works. Um, all right, uh, we've got a round of us to to go through to talk about ourselves and. Uh, I definitely want to start with Karen and so glad that you are here with us. And I hope you enjoyed your first podcast round in all of its glory. And please uh, tell people where to find you on the internet. Well, thank you. I've had so much fun being here with everybody and uh, you can find me and links to all my other stuff that I do pretty much on all the socials at Karen M. Peterson. Yes, and Karen just has started here with Awards Watch, which is yeah. why Woo-hoo. she is here today. Um, her first piece was the 50th anniversary of the conversation and more to come. Yes. Kevin, please tell people who you are. Who because are? You're, you, you've, you've said like four things, Kevin. <laughs> Let's go. You can find uh, all of my work at awards watch film inquiry and that shelf i am on twitter at kaylee underscore film review and josh you can find me on twitter and letterboxd at jr parham and you can find all my work over at next best picture and awards watch yes and again josh will be at can and we are really looking forward to that tea Dan, I'm, I'm looking forward to it myself. <laughs> yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Dance and Dan on Film and on Letterboxd and Post at Dance and Dan. You can find everything that I write here at Awards Watch and at Next Best Picture. Mr. Ledbetter. Yeah, you can find me on the Bob's Budget Blog message boards on there. Uh, Letterboxd, J Ledbetter. Uh, we've got a podcast on this very podcast network called Director Watch that I do with uh, the absent Ryan McQuaid. Uh, we're talking about Sofia Coppola right now, so uh, go go check that out. And, you know, see me on the street. Talk to me about some flicks, folks. Sophia. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at Sophia underscore Sim Letterboxd. Same handle without the underscore. I just have logged so many great movies recently so go follow me there and you can find my podcast oscar wilde at oscar wilde pod we're doing a 1974 month we just did a chinatown episode and we have the conversation coming this week so i'm excited for that and you can find all of my reviews including most recently sam taylor johnson's back to black interviews and more podcasts at awards watch Chinatown and... was fantastic, Sophia. Yes. Oh, yes. thank you. Thanks. Great podcast. Second best on the internet. Maybe <laughs> the best. We're Ma- the runner-up to and the runner-up is. 
Yes. And I know I can say that with, with absolute respect. No, I know. Uh, yes. <laughs> Um, you can find me hacking the mainframe at Bob's box office so that I can double Sophia's team's budgets and carve ours in half. Because <laughs> that's the only way we're winning, folks. I'm just going to say it. Just Not according it. to the J Jorama 5000. <laughs> We'll 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 see about the numbers. That. Maybe see crunched. maybe I'm, maybe I'm just using some reverse psychology and I'm like underplaying it so that when we win, it's going to be like I knew it all along. Like Garfield is going to gross a billion dollars. I'm telling you, it's the Super Mario Brothers of this year. <laughs> it's not. It's not, not at all. <laughs> no. Uh, <laughs> all right. Yes, you can you can find me at awardswatch.com, of course. Uh, Twitter at awards underscore watch everywhere else. Instagram letterbox at just awards watch. And thanks everybody for getting together for this. I hope that we all do fantastic and I want everyone to win. All right. Thank you everybody for listening and thanks everybody for joining us today. <laughs>